Hi friends, welcome back to Bell's Library. I'm Heather and today we're going to do a video that I'm a little nervous to be doing. I'm going to do one of the These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 Months videos. I don't want to have to unhaul these books without having read them and so that's what's making me a little nervous. But basically how these videos tend to work is that you are choosing books off your shelf and you have 12 months to read them and if you don't get it done then you have to unhaul them. I don't know so that makes me nervous because I want to be able to read them before I like I'm like oh I'm just gonna get rid of this because then what if I like get rid of it and then I'm like no wait now I really want to read that again and then I don't know. <laughs> but that's the whole point right? And why I'm doing this is because I really really need to start reading some books off my shelves. Um, I'm making good progress this year honestly. I have been reading more off my shelves, which is awesome, but I still have so many great books off my shelves that I just, I need to get to. And so some of these books we're gonna be talking about are books that I bought that I was interested in at the time, but now I'm kind of like, I don't know I'm interested anymore. And I, and so I'm not necessarily gravitating towards grabbing them. So this is gonna help me like, yeah, you either need to pick it up and grab it or you need to get rid of it. And then I have another chunk of books that I'm just like, I look at them all the time on my bookcase and I'm like, you need to read that book. Get to that book, Heather. Come on, let's do it. And I just like get excited about the idea of reading it, but then I don't pick it up because it doesn't end up on my TBR and I need to, I need to prioritize and make sure that these books are getting onto my TBR that I want to read. So I think I have 15 books for you guys and we'll go come back. So it's going up in June. I'm going to give myself until the end of next June to get through these books. Like I said, there's 15 books. So it's about one of these books a month. A couple months, we're going to have to do two books in the month. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where that's at. I can maybe even do like a reading vlog and just like get a few of these done and move through it or something. I don't know. But anyways, let's talk about the books that I have. Okay, so we'll start with the stack where it's like books that I was interested in that I'm kind of like not as interested in. I still am kind of, but not like as much. So the first book we have on the stack here is Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. And I actually have read one of her short stories, The Grown Up, and really enjoyed it by her. And I know this was really popular a while ago. It was made into a movie and um, a lot of people really enjoy it, but I've also heard it the other way, but... I don't know, I feel like I picked it up from the hype, but I'm not really sure how invested I am into actually reading this. I believe like this woman goes missing and they're questioning if it was the husband. Yeah, so we have this couple and the woman ends up going missing and then they're questioning the husband and he is like being kind of deceptive about things and so it's just making him more in question. I don't know, I've heard there's a good twist at the end of this one and I haven't seen the movie um, and I haven't been spoiled for the twist, so it could still definitely be good. Um, it's also like 500 something pages, which is crazy long, I feel like, for like a thriller type book like this, so I don't know. The next book I have here is Star Daughter. This is by Shveta Thakrar. I do not want to get rid of this book because it is gorgeous. Like these purple sprayed edges are just stunning. This is a Alcree edition and it's just, it's beautiful. It's signed in here somewhere. There it is signed. So I don't want to get rid of this book. It is just gorgeous. But I haven't been hearing the greatest things about the book. Basic understanding is that we have this girl who is half star and half human and then like her dad gets sick or something and she ends up trying to find the mom who's the star I believe. And then there's some kind of like trials or something she has to go through to be accepted by the stars. I believe. I believe there it's something like that. So Hopefully I can get to that one soon. And then we have The Darkest Minds. This is by Alexandra Bracken. Now that I'm reading the author's name, I feel like there's something else by her that I wanted to read. I picked this up inexpensively. I think it was only like a couple bucks. It seemed kind of intriguing. I think the reviews are pretty good, but I honestly don't remember what this is about. Let's read it. Uh, when Ruby woke up on her 10th birthday, something about her had changed something frightening enough to make her parents lock her in the garage and call the police. So then she's sent to a brutal government rehabilitation camp. Oh yeah, and I think she like escapes with some of the other kids or something. And 
And then they're like trying to get to this place called East River, which is like where a lot of the kids kind of get away to that have some kind of, I believe, powers or something like that. And then um, things just don't seem right when they get there and the leader, something's off with the leader of the pack or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So then we have Two Truths and a Lie by Meg Mitchell Moore. So I actually won this through a Goodreads giveaway and I think I was kind of intrigued when I was reading it and I was like, yeah, we'll enter this giveaway. And then I ended up winning and it was sent to me and now I'm just kind of like, well, maybe not. Um, I feel like my taste has kind of changed when it comes to thrillers and this doesn't totally seem like it's gonna fit my taste in that area. I think we're following like a couple different women and they each have their own secrets and one of them just moved into this beachy town and the other ones lived there for a while and everyone in this little town seems welcoming but are they really kind of a thing and then there's a game two truths and a lie but is it really just a game i don't know so kind of you know an interesting summer thriller might actually be good to read during the summer this next book the bookish life of nina hill by abby waxman has an interesting story as to why it came into my collection this is a book I had heard about that I was like, eh, I mean, I would read it, but I wasn't like actively like really like I want to go out and get this book and read it and like all this stuff. So we're at the bookstore um, at a local used one and my daughter's trying to help me find a book and she kept pulling out these books and I was like, no, that's like, I really am not interested in these books that she keeps pulling out and I feel bad. And so then she pulls this one out and I was like, I've actually seen that one and it seemed like eh, maybe a little interesting and so I was like okay yes you know it's a couple bucks we'll do it and so I ended up picking it up because I just I wanted my daughter to be excited and she was so excited that she found me a book and so but I didn't have like the full interest before so now I'm like I need to kind of get myself moving on this book so basically we're following Nina and she's like I think like a loner kind of girl she works at like a bookstore and then um, she's raised by a single mom, but then her father that she never knew about unexpectedly dies, and I think she inherits some of his money or something, but she also inherits, like, a whole bunch of brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and, like, all these people, and she's like, ah, I have a single mom, and I'm kind of, like, a little loner over here, and I just like to read, and so it just freaks her out or something. I don't know, so she's kind of on a journey of, like, figuring out how to deal with all of that. Okay, so this next one is Paper Towns by John Green. I have not read a John Green book, but I own three of his books. Um, I was gonna maybe put all of them on here, but I decided let's just read one, see how it goes, and then see what I wanna do from there with the rest. So, so this one is about Margot and Q, and Margot loves mysteries, and her and Q um, or Quentin, I don't know, maybe he goes by both, I'm guessing. Um, they basically go out for this fun night and then Margot goes missing and Q's like, well, maybe she liked mysteries a little bit more than I thought and there's like clues that are left for him to follow to find her, I believe. Um, so, yeah, a lot of thrillers uh, in here. Thrillers, I'm, I'm, I think I'm learning better what I like and don't like in thrillers and so it's kind of, We'll see. Um, and I feel like with like, this is kind of mystery, which I actually enjoy mystery a little bit more. Uh, so I could actually really enjoy this. I think what's kind of pulled me away from it is I kind of got into the John Green hype when he was kind of really popular. Um, and I was watching some of those videos and I pulled them, but now it's kind of like, I don't know, like would I actually like this or is it gonna be too YA for me? So the next one is One of Us is Lying, and this is by Karen M. McManus, and basically we have like this group of teenagers, and I believe one of them ends up dying, and they're like around, and somebody's lying about it or something. So yeah, it says five students walk into a ten into a detention, that's the word, uh, and then I think like only four of them, yeah, before the end of detention, Simon's dead and his death wasn't an accident. Um, and then you've got the other four that were in the room and somebody's lying and trying to figure out what actually happened to Simon. Okay, so that was like the first half where it was like, okay, these are books that I'm 
le less interested in. The next half are books that I'm very interested in that I just need to make myself get to already that are on my shelf because they all sound so good and I just, I want to read them really badly. I've actually been thinking about this one quite a bit and I don't know how to fit it into Belle's Bookland and I think that might be why I haven't read it yet. Um, I just, it just hasn't squeezed in there, but I've been wanting to read this book, Hungry Hearts, and this is a collection of short stories, so it's by a whole bunch of different authors. There's 13 Tales of Food and Love. When I first heard about this book, I just thought it sounded really cute and sweet. You basically have this little town, and there's a bunch of different little food places, and each of the stories about one of these different food places. So we have like a little ice cream shop, there's uh, an Italian place, there's um, a Mexican place. I don't know. There's just like a whole bunch. And I've heard that like some of these are more like fantasy. Like there's one with superheroes, I think. And some of them are more romancy or contemporary. But just like a bunch of like a little collection of fun food type books. And I just I want to read it. It sounds really fun. Ah. Okay, so another one that I really want to get to is Everything Beautiful is Not Ruined by Danielle Young Ullman. And there was another book by her that I really wanted to get to as well. I just, I've heard that her writing is really beautiful and there's just something that's intriguing me about this, although I'm not really sure what it is, but I really want to get to this book. Um, we're following Ingrid and her mom and her travel around Europe and her mom's like a famous opera star and then her career ends up ending and that's kind of like the past that you're following. And then now Ingrid's at this like, camp for the summer for at-risk teens like addicts and runaways and she's trying to figure out why she's there and figure out all these crazy mind games that are happening and I don't know how those connect or collide but I don't know I heard really good things about it a while back and I just I've heard good things about her writing I'm curious okay, so then we've got the names they gave us by Emery Lord got a couple of her books on my shelves here that I need to get to. I've heard her writing's really good as well, and I heard that this is a total tearjerker. Um, we're following the main character. Her mom's, like, cancer comes back, and it just, like, crushes her whole entire world and just changes everything and kind of the journey through that. So I'm expecting this to be very sad, um, and I don't know that I'm prepared to cry. Maybe that's why I haven't picked it up yet. And then this one I actually haven't had for too long, but Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I read Home Before Dark last year by him and really enjoyed it, and I want to get to more of his backlist. And this one, um, we're following the main character, like, gets to go to this apartment, and there's rules. So it says no visitors, no nights spent away from the apartment, no disturbing the other residents, all of whom are rich or famous or both. I think she gets it for, like, really cheap or free or something and um, she just has to follow all these rules and but then like there's weird things happening and I think things happen at night and she's hearing weird sounds um so I don't know there's something more going on here that maybe you know it was too good of a deal in the first place another one I really want to get to is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell I've been seeing this one quite a bit around booktube recently and I just really want to get into this story. I mean, I love magicians' magic-y stuff, so it just sounds amazing. And it says, stop the magician, steal the book, save the future. And it's set in New York, where magic's almost extinct, but it's not. And um, everybody who has a little bit of magic is, like, hidden in the shadows. And I don't know. I just, it sounds good, and everybody's been raving about it, and I just want to get to it. Next book, A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling I really want to get to. So this is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm excited to get to it. I think it's set in more of like a present day type setting and um, I just, that is honestly what intrigued me. I was like, ooh, Beauty and the Beast retelling. Okay, I'm down. I believe, okay, so I believe that the prince basically takes a new girl every year and to see if he can break his curse and um, this particular girl that he takes this year, I believe is one or something. I don't know. We'll find out when I read it. So this next one is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I have not read a Brandon Sanderson book yet, and I feel like he's so popular here on BookTube. And I felt like this would be a good like intro. I'm getting into sci-fi more. It's a YA. And so I just, a lot of people have been really enjoying this one. And 
I just felt like this one could be a good one to start with. Um, I there's like <laughs> there's like no synopsis on this, um, but I'm pretty sure like she's training to be like a pilot or something, and I think there's stuff with aliens and I don't know. It says defiance is survival. I just know it's got some spacey stuff and it's sci-fi and it's sounds interesting. <laughs> I know that every time I've heard this explained, it sounded good and I, I wanted to start with a Brandon Sanderson that I thought I would enjoy and that the YA side of it I was hoping would make it a little easier for me to, to get into his work. And the last book is Sorcery of Thorns and that's by Margaret Rogerson. This one is about like a library where there's these books that like come alive and then there's librarians who like have to watch over it. So yeah, I think one of the like grimoires gets loose from the library and things kind of ensue from there. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to get to this one. I did a try chapter like a year ago and I read a chapter of this and it seemed really intriguing and interesting and I just haven't gotten back to it. So I need to do that. So this one's going on the list. So here's all the books, 15 books I have to get through and the next year is like they got to go. Um, and they still might after I read them, but I want to read them before I decide if I want to let them go. So anyways, enough of my whining. Um, there it is, a whole bunch of books. Uh, let me know if I should prioritize some of these or what you guys think if you've read these before. I would love to hear from you guys down below and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.